So Dana was talking about Piera, and he said uh, when he comes up to 205, he will debut with a real fight. That's a quote, a real fight. And we all know what that means, don't we? It's hard to define. It's why Dana did it. It's why he used that term, but we know what that means, right? It's going to be a top guy. There is nothing off the table. Championship match, walking in against Jamal is on the table. Not the likely, not the direction that Dana leaned in, but when I look at 205, I got to tell you guys, I'm, I'm flat confused. I like Jamal Hill a lot. I mean, not just the fighter. Right? That would be weird if I came and told you, I think he's a really good fighter. Oh, gee, Chael, you think the champion of the world's a good fighter? I don't mean it like that. I like from an entertainer. I like the way he walks through the ring. I like the way he talks. I like the way he conducts himself on social media. I like the faith he has in himself. I like the fact that if anybody calls him out, he's coming at him right now. He doesn't do the whole win a couple of fights and come see me. Work your way up, kid. He doesn't do that. Anybody that calls him out, he will answer and he'll tell you, come get it right now. And he means it. You can feel that he means it. I like Jamal. That said, I don't know who's next for Jamal. I don't know who's in line. I don't have a rumor that I can spread about Jamal. That's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's their fault. Somebody should be going after him. I feel as though there's a, a little bit of a punishment, for lack of a better word, towards Uncle Ivan and Blahovich because of their match. I don't agree with it. I like their match. I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. I thought Ankolaev looked great. By the way, Blahovich had to deal with that. And Blahovich has had times in his past where when things aren't going his way, he is unraveled. It was the opposite in that fight. He got he started coming on. I mean, he he really did. He really started to manage himself, started to understand where he was at. I thought he was up three. The the, the next two rounds that Blahovich did not win, but I could tell that he was conserving, he was protecting himself. I could see the strategy. All of a sudden, instead of beating the guy, he turns into more of a strategy. He, he tries to beat the clock. Guys, we saw that it's a risky game, but we saw that, uh, just to give you an example, would be uh, Sterling versus Peter Yan, part two, where Sterling believed he was up, and now he's going to follow the golden rule, protect himself at all times, run this one out. I mean, it's a risky strategy. It ended up biting Yan in the ass. But it was a fun match. I didn't think that there was anything wrong there. And I, I'm just bringing that to you because Jan Blahovich has called out Alex Piera. Now, one more, which is Walker. Walker didn't quite call Piera out, but he spoke about him, and it wasn't overly friendly. They were fighting words. And he told Piera something. It had something to do with his power. Basically, Johnny was insinuating, as much of a knockout artist as you are down here, we can take harder shots. Harder shots than you can deliver. Now, I don't need you to break that down and tell her he's a big guy and he's going to grow into it. I'm telling you what Walker said. That's an interesting match. Walker's interesting on any given day, right? There aren't a lot of ways to beat Walker. That's one thing that is misunderstood. People thought, oh, he wasn't as good as the hype and things like that. Yes, he is. Sure he was. There's, there's ways to beat him, but there isn't very many. I mean, you got to land that right shot. You got to get in. You got to understand where to put it. Even if you're going to take him to the ground, which is not a skill that Piera has. There's still only a position on the ground that gives him problems. That's up to you to go out and find him. I've just shared it. That's, a, that's an interesting match. And then as we talk about 205 pounds, why don't we know more about Prohaska? I am becoming very interested in Prohaska. I was at a Bellator event. I get to have lunch and, and reconnect with an old friend in King Mo. King Mo has fought Prohaska twice. And listening to Mo, Mo is telling me about this. Guy. Mo was ranting and raving. And Mo finished him one time. Mo was still ranting and raving. He said the night that he finished him, the night Mo, the night that Mo finished Prohaska, he went to the locker room believing in Prohaska. He said it was just a different feel. It was a different pace. It was a different pair. It was different angles. He talked about the relief when it was done. I finished that lunch, okay, catching up with Mo, going, wow, I didn't know these things about Prohaska. You're really making me look at it different. I leave that, going back to my room, through the lobby, I run into C.B. Dalloway. CB then tell me the same thing about Prohaska. Had me completely interested in him. I mean, completely interested in that shoulder injury. What is that, guys? And we were told it's the worst that anybody's ever seen. I mean, I, I really would encourage you. That's your business. 
I mean, I would encourage you in life a couple of things. Don't tell anybody your weakness and don't tell anybody your strength. Anybody. You think they're your friend or your enemy. Don't tell them what your dream is. And don't tell them what your ailment is. I would just encourage that. Take that with you. Do what you want with that. But there's some things that you keep to yourself. So they stripped Prohaska of the book. This is the worst injury they'd ever seen. Now, I came and told you guys you stripped him. The comments were tough. They, he relinquished the belt. He did not. He got stripped. I, I don't know why, but you guys keep pushing on that. So now I've got to push back. It's a little bit of a mute point, but I'm not going to let you win because you're wrong. That's not what happened. I know that's what he said. I'm telling you what happened. He got stripped. But now he's coming back himself and saying, that was overblown. I'll be back. It's going to be towards the end of the year, but I will be back. That's great. That's great news for the light heavyweights. But who's he going to be back against? Is, is it going to be Hill? Is that what you guys are going to want to see? Prohaska, when he returns, should be able to return for a championship match. Can we agree on that? He should not have to return as a stripped champion to a contender's match. Can we agree? But the calendar might not line up. If we get Piera a fight in a number of months, and that makes him a number one contender, we start drawing that in to Jamal, and Prohaska returns. I mean, what do we do, right? Jamal, I'm sure, would fight them both. We can't fight them both on the same night. It starts to get jammed up. But, but as you're thinking about that, right? As you're thinking about that, think about this. All of a sudden, 205 is pretty interesting. But they're not making it interesting. I mean, I just had to reach in a whole bunch of directions, and I had to go back as far as two months to a, to a meal that I had with King Mo and a conversation in, in a hotel lobby that I had with C.B. Dalloway. I have to go back because they haven't given me anything recent. I have nothing today. Go to Mania, go to Elbow, go to BJPenn.com, go to Sherdog, go to Fighting, go to Junkie. Do it, really. I'm challenging you. Do it right now. None of those sites will you see a 205-pounder in a headline. And by headline, by the way, I'm not talking about the time. Anywhere on the front page. And any 205 I give a damn if he's ranked number 20 or is a new guy that just got signed. There is no, there is no chatter. And guys, that's not just today. That was last week and the week before. I don't know what's going on at 205. I'm just bringing that to your attention. I have no idea. The only thing that has made a splash at all in 205 pounds at all is that Pierre is going to enter the division. That's it. Pierre is not exactly going to go light up the media world, but the fact that he's going the division at least got light heavyweight discussed, at least got a headline somewhere that said light heavyweight. It's weird. Why is that happening? Why? Those guys aren't duds. Jamal is definitely not. Jamal's got something to say. What, people not calling him? Are they not asking him? Prohaska has never had a more important time, which, by the way, is nothing else to do. What is happening there? Uncle Lyev certainly knows what I said to be true, that it appears that he's kind of being black. But well, he's got to break through that. He's got to come out. Blahovich is. I'll give him some credit. But it's, it's a very interesting division. It's a very competitive division. Right now, for reasons unknown, it's a very quiet division. 